Hey everyone, Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor here. Did you know approximately 30% of people at any given time report symptoms of insomnia and 10% of the overall population has chronic symptoms of insomnia? What is insomnia? Insomnia is the inability to fall asleep, stay asleep, or get quality sleep, even when you've had a chance for sufficient rest. And of course, it can also cause issues during the day like daytime sleepiness, poor concentration, even changes in mood. It turns out though that there are types of insomnia. Insomnia can be diagnosed as either short-term or chronic depending upon how long the symptoms go on. Short-term insomnia involves symptoms that last fewer than three months, while chronic insomnia involves symptoms that are present three or more times a week for three months or longer. Interestingly, insomnia can also be described by a person's specific symptoms. Sleep onset insomnia is when you have difficulty falling asleep. Remember, the average adult takes about 10 to 20 minutes to fall asleep, while a person with sleep onset insomnia, it might take 30 minutes or longer. On the other hand, people with sleep maintenance insomnia have difficulty falling back to sleep when their sleep gets interrupted. Now, you might be wondering, well, what are some of the signs and symptoms of insomnia? Well, nighttime symptoms of insomnia include difficulty falling asleep, difficulty staying asleep through the night, and waking up too early. But there are also daytime symptoms of insomnia. This can include daytime sleepiness, fatigue, diminished motivation for sure, irritability or other mood changes, as well as difficulty concentrating, remembering, or paying attention. Now you might wonder, well, okay, what are the causes of insomnia? There's quite a few. Number one, you guessed it, stress. Stress elevates your heart rate and affects the release of certain hormones, which can keep you up at night. Another thing are your daily habits, like exercising, drinking alcohol or caffeine, or smoking near bedtime. This can definitely make it harder to get quality sleep. Of course, mental health conditions as well. These conditions and insomnia have a somewhat complex relationship. Remember, treatment for insomnia often targets both sleep-related symptoms as well as comorbid conditions that may be affecting other sleep difficulties. Insomnia affects many people with medical conditions like diabetes, cancer, even Parkinson's disease. But remember, insomnia often results from a condition's symptoms, side effects of treatment, or the emotional impact of being diagnosed with those serious medical conditions. And in some cases, insomnia is related to other sleep disorders. Notably, both restless leg syndrome, sleep apnea, and circadian sleep-wake disorders may produce insomnia-like symptoms. So we've got a lot of information now. Who is at risk for insomnia? Well, let's be fair. Anyone can develop insomnia. However, there are several groups that are at a higher risk. Number one, research shows that insomnia symptoms are common among children and teens. Shift workers are twice as likely to have insomnia as people who work during the day, and insomnia is also common during pregnancy. About 38% of pregnant people experience symptoms, and the likelihood of insomnia increases each trimester of pregnancy. And finally, older adults. It's estimated that between 12 and 20% of adults over the age of 60 have some type of insomnia sleep disorder. Okay, what are the treatments for insomnia? Well, the preferred treatment for chronic insomnia is called Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Insomnia, or CBTI. CBTI involves sleep education and strategies like reducing the amount of time awake in bed and developing healthy sleep habits. Doctors may also recommend medications or sleep aids if symptoms do not improve with CBTI. Make sure to consult your healthcare provider before beginning any medications or sleep aids. So what are some tips that you can do now to help prevent your insomnia? Well, one of the things you can definitely do, exercise daily. Getting at least 30 minutes of exercise each day can make it a lot easier to fall asleep at night. Number two, avoid napping later in the day. If you need a daytime nap, try to keep it under 30 minutes and make it at least eight hours before bedtime. Number three, improve your overall sleep environment. Let's be fair, making a quiet, dark, and comfortable sleep environment can help promote better sleep. Number four, keep a consistent bedtime routine. Even on the weekends, try to wake up and go to bed at roughly the same times every day. Number five, avoid foods and drinks that impact sleep. Stay away from caffeine in the afternoon or evening. Also, try not to drink alcohol or eat large meals too late in the day. Number six, limit electronics before bed. Remember, computer screens, TVs, cell phones, and tablets emit light, and that can keep you awake. And number seven, don't stay in bed if you can't sleep. Get out of bed if you can't sleep after 30 minutes of trying. Instead, try reading, meditating, or doing another quiet activity until you feel sleepy. Remember, insomnia can be incredibly frustrating and it can often feel like there's no hope. If you think you have insomnia, use some of these tips and I can't stress enough, consult with a physician to learn more about treatment options. This is Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor, wishing you sweet dreams.